Welcome to Community Forum. My name is John Goliatino. I'm your host. Uh, we're going to be talking to the uh, my friends uh, from the Rock and Rescue uh, operation. They uh, are basically a, a cat rest cat and sometimes dog rescue operation. And uh, without further ado, we're going to have uh, Marla uh, Valentine and Julie uh, uh, Salone uh, come on and uh, give us a little bit of a background uh, information for those that haven't seen her seen them on here before so come on, on, on. and uh in no special order marla why don't you go first and uh and tell us a little bit about yourself and, and how you ended up uh doing this kind of work uh for society sure so i'm marla valentine and i am a social worker by trade i started in 2017 I hooked up with Julie, um, who was starting off with um, Rock and Rescue as a volunteer and a foster. And from there, um, a friendship um, blossomed and we talked a little bit about where we could bring therapy and cats together. So um, the idea of how you know, our motto, um, our mission is um, how animals, um, how we save, we save animals to save people. And um, that's how we, Julie and I started and it, Rock and Rescue became what it is now. Okay, very good. Julie. Hi everyone, my name is Julie Cialoni and I'm the co-director and founder of Rock and Rescue. And uh, our mission, as Marla says, is is for therapy for both humans and uh, animals. But uh, obviously, our ultimate goal is to save animals that are at uh, risk for being euthanized. So we often go to some of the southern states and take cats that are exceptional for many reasons and bring them up here to be adopted. And now we have expanded into also uh, finding some very, very special dogs as well. Okay, very good. Um, where did the rock come from? We got to, because there's going to be people out there that haven't seen this before and going to say, why is it rock and rescue? Were they rock stars at one time? <laughs> so, <laughs> Julie can answer that. So initially, um, while Marla was a social worker, I was a photographer and I did a lot of photography of um, of rock bands and rock singers, not actually, not just rock, but blues and um, country and pop singers. And so what I would do is I would go backstage and I would ask the artist, please support uh, Animal Rescue. And we would rescue a dog and a cat uh, in that band's or singer's name. And uh, oftentimes re like renaming the animal that we rescued um, after the band. And then the band would help us by promoting the animal. And we still do this. We're actually uh, restarting that, that side of our rescue again now that concerts are coming back. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and then uh, the, the other thing that's sort of unique is that what you do at uh, nursing homes and now recently you're doing it at hospitals. Well, we're, we haven't actually started with the hospital yet, started yet. Okay. but we are, we are in contact with um, a few local hospitals. We um, have something called um, Kitty Clubs and we've established it in several of the local nursing homes. And we go into the nursing homes with um, our therapy cats, as well as um, a whole bunch of kittens. We set up a playpen and um, we have residents gather around the playpen and we do an activity called fishing for kittens. So they, the, um, the residents will take a fishing toy and um, drop it into the playpen. And when they catch a kitten, our volunteers will then pick up the, the kitten and um, swaddle, swaddle it up and hand it to the, to the resident to hold. And during this time, it's just, it's, it's a wonderful um, therapeutic recreational activity for the residents. And we also sometimes work with occupational therapists 
um, during this program, you know, on fine motor skills, uh, holding the, the fishing rod and, um, you know, trying to catch the kitten. But um, our, going back to our volunteers, we'll then sit with the residents and, you know, ask them questions about what, you know, what type of pets did they have growing up or, you know, or, or now if they are in short-term rehab and, um, you, know, ex, you know, explore different topics about family and history and, and their pets. It's, it's fun. Yeah, there was a survey conducted that had cats ahead of dogs, not by a lot, but they, more people like cats than dogs or have them around more or whatever, you know, so I, how that, it depends, I guess, what county or what uh, section of the Northern Fairfield County it might be different than Southern Fairfield County. I don't, I don't know, but it was a, just the thought I'd mention that. Um, now, uh, one of the reasons the Iran is you're looking for uh, what from the public? Uh, you, you're obviously like to have volunteers help you, especially when you're making these trips uh, to the nursing homes and the future trips to the hospitals uh, to, to cheer patients along, you know, and uh, make their life a little uh, happier at that point that there's an animal visiting, and aside from yourself. You know. Uh, uh, you know, they got some, something to play with or whatever. Um, so um, you're looking for volunteers and you're looking also for people to support your uh, program, right? Uh, anytime you want to say something, <laughs> either Julie or Bob. Yeah, they, right now we are, we're starting uh, hopefully a new uh, capital campaign. Um, we would like to actually expand our programs to have a facility where we can do on-site uh, therapy with therapists um, who would be doing uh, psychotherapy, possibly physical therapy, where we can do our yoga with kitties and a reading program with kitties and also expand it into a more community-centric central uh, centric oriented rescue that would not necessarily have, you know, kennels and hundred animals on site at all times, very, actually very minimal animals on site because all of our animals are in foster and that program works very well for the animals and for the people adopting. Uh, but we really need right now grant writers, um, media experts to just make us make what we're doing more aware in the public. Okay. Well, hopefully we're, we're doing our part over here, you know. Um, contact information, why don't we do it, another contact information now, and then at the end we're going to Okay, you got, all of you got it all down on the card. Very good. Yeah, there's all of our stuff. That's my contact information. Okay. And I can see it's Rock and Rescue. Yep. Uh, uh, rock and Rescue One yep. at gmail. At gmail.com. And our website is www.rnrpets.org. Okay. Very good. Okay, now I know you had you have something between the two of you that you're going to go a little bit of back and forth. Do you want to do that now, or do you? Sure. Yeah, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so um, we decided that we have um, recently been getting a lot of questions from the public uh, coming to the rescue regarding animals outdoors, whether their cat has escaped um, or whether they're having a nuisance problem with cats in the area and they're not sure what to do about it. Um, or they're adopting and they've been misinformed by um, just being, you know, old time concepts of cats. So tonight we put together some questions regarding cats and why outdoors is not a good idea for any cat um, and for just your community at large. Um, I, everyone always says, oh, cats, they deserve to be out there. They're wild and this is, this is how they are. Uh, this is nature. They're part of nature and we're, we're denying them the beauty of the outdoors. But in fact, you're actually hurting the outdoors and hurting their chances of living longer by, by letting them go outdoors. Um, so tonight our questions um, I will ask and, and Marla will um, jump in and then I can also always follow up with her. So first of all, everyone always says, uh, you'll see some towns, they, they say they won't you got a cat in your yard, they won't come help you. And they say a cat is an indigenous uh, part of your community. And um, right here in Lewisboro where we're based, um, it is part of their thing. You know, the cat people, the, the animal control will say it's part of the wildlife. In fact, it's not. So this is our first question. 
a little bit lower. Okay. Oh, there we go. Sorry. Are domestic cats indigenous to any country, any area? Any yeah. area. Um, no, they're not. So cats are not indigenous to um, to any area. They, they've been domesticated from wild animals. Um, so there's your from wild cats. There's your answer right there. Yeah, uh, they once they've been domesticated, domesticated and they're inside. They're just the, they're sort of helpless when they're or they there's a generation of being domesticated. Well, well, cats have been domesticated for so many years that no cat is ind indigenous to any country. So to call any of our cats outdoors is is really silly. Um, this is not a bobcat. This is not a puma. This is not um, an Aussie cat. These are not cats that are actually born and raised and, and jet by generational times out, outdoors um, and living and functioning outdoors in a natural wildlife scenario. They actually say that... Um you know, the, that cats now are one of the um, hundred um, top hundred invasive species worldwide. I mean, there's problems everywhere. Yeah. You hear about it in Italy, you hear about it in Ireland, you hear about it um, Australia. in Australia, you hear about it in the States. You know, they're, they're, they're one invasive of the species. So um, th that comes to my second question, which is really, really critical, because I don't think people realize just how much damage a cat can do. Um, and we're just talking about, um, you know, in, in certain countries. This is not, these are not worldwide questions. These are okay. USA questions. How many backyard animals do cats kill per year in the United States? Um, many. <laughs> <laughs> what, what kind of animals are they killing? Um, they're, they're, they're killing, they're, they're killing all of our, um, our, our, our songbird population is being decimated. Our squirrels, our chipmunks, um, they, they, you know, they're, they're destroying our, um, you know, what many people, you know, enjoy, um, and try to bring into their backyards, um, rabbits, chipmunks, squirrels, songbirds, especially, um, you know, they, they, they just sit around the bird feeders. It's, uh, it's 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 very it's it's, it's problematic. So in um, just so you know, in just the United States alone, twelve point three billion mammals are killed, and two point four billion birds are killed every year in the United States. That's just a crazy number. I mean, their cats are known to have decimated and caused the extinction of many species, not just in the United States. But um, what Australia is facing right now is the decimation and extinction of species um, being killed by cats that are outdoors. Yeah, so in other words, you're saying keep the cats indoors because if you let them roam, they're 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 very damaging. Even though yeah. they're, they're nice creatures when they're inside and they're being petted and they're sitting at your feet or they don't they don't mean to kill things. They that's just their instinct. They could have a full belly and they're just out there playing, but they end yeah. up doing a lot of damage and they they end up liking what they're doing and becomes um the hunt becomes just a game well but the other piece here that people don't think about is that to 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 the to the cat owner they love their cats but cats can be a nuisance to your neighbors they will um they will destroy your gardens if um you have a sandbox um in your backyard uh you know a neighboring cat will use the sandbox as a litter box I mean, that's not enjoyable. That is not fun for your neighbors. Um, gardens destroyed, litter boxes. I mean, as you know, sandboxes for litter boxes, it's, you're not, you're not being, you, you don't allow your dog to free roam. And there's a reason for it. You shouldn't be allowing your cat to, to free, free roam. Right. So, uh, so that also, you know, is also about the cats themselves. So everyone's always saying, um, well, my cat will have a better life. But in fact, you know, this is the next question I want to pose is. How much longer can an indoor cat versus an outdoor cat live on average? Oh, I can answer this one easily. <laughs> so um, I, I, you will always have a person say, my outdoor cat lived to 18 or 15. That is not the norm. According to the Humane Society, they're saying that outdoor cats live usually a typical three to four years. Um, indoor cats, 19 to 20 years. 
um, there is a huge difference in um, the quality and the quantity of, um, of, of the life of a cat, of an outdoor cat versus an indoor cat. That was a very good question because that, that's the way it turned out in our family. And we had, uh, we had a cat that, you know, he was like Muscles McGurk versus the small ones. The small ones, they went out, you know, because we had that same theory. And they were gone in three years, four years. Yeah. Now, the, the larger one, he was in more. But when he went out, he would roam all over the place. He died at nine years because he got hit by a car. He shouldn't have been in the street. He was going across the street uh, to play on the other side of the street, apparently. Well, you know what? That's a really good point, John, because so many people say, well, you know, I, I live on five acres and I have a beautiful backyard. Um, why can't I let my, my cat roam? And I also have it fenced in. You know what? There's a driveway. You may have three or four acres behind your house, but your driveway is a access road right to the street. The cats go out the front door or the back door, they go to the driveway and they just follow the driveway up. And there they have access to the street where they get hit by cars. Or the person who lives at the house, I mean, sadly we've heard this many times, is they've accidentally run over their own cat. Yeah. You know, or the cat was sitting in the engine um, and uh, you know, getting warm and they turned it on and again, a tragedy and uh, I, it's just horrible. Like you don't want to, you don't want to hear those things, but it happens a lot more frequently than, than you think. And that's definitely a huge part. And for outdoor, outdoor cats, they, 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 they get bitten by other cats. You hear it all the time about the, 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 the cat fights between neighborhood cats um, and, and predators. I mean, there's, there's, there's coyotes, there are foxes, um, there's hawks, there's eagles. They, they, they all, you know, they, they, they prey on, on cats. Just this week alone, we had an eagle that lives um, on my lake here, and it, it killed an adult swan. And if, if you don't think that eagle can kill your cat or your small dog, you are absolutely wrong. If it can take down an adult swan, it can take down some pretty, pretty major size animals, which includes your cats and, your, and some small dogs. So also, like outside, um, there's this question to be thinking about. What diseases can a cat get by going outdoors? I would imagine everything that they're susceptible to is cat, well, right? I mean, but, but besides, you know, um, parasites and everyone's always thinking about fleas, you know, there's you know, Lyme disease. Um, Lyme disease in cats right now is, is growing. It's huge. Um, it's not only threatening cats, it's also threatening humans. So um, your cat goes out, it brings back a, t a deer tick on it, and then um, and your, the human, human gets, you yeah. know, um, gets, gets bitten. There's um, FIV, there's FELV, um, the, the rotaviruses, um, there's, um, if, you know. The problem, with, the problem with the FELV is that it, you know, if people are like, oh, well, you know, it, w they're vaccinated for it. Well, are you keeping, making sure that they're vaccinated, you know, properly? If they haven't had their rounds of series of vaccinations and they get FELV, it's a fatal disease. Do they live a long life with FELV? With FIV, yes, they can live longer. I guess um, between with, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, with FELV, they, yeah. they, they'll get, they'll get tumors, they'll get cancers, and they'll die again at about three or four years of age. So you're shortening your cat's life with something that is uh, quite common to get for a cat and very easily for someone not to know that they're vaccinated. Is it is it possible for a cat to get to 20 years? If they're yes, inside? They stay inside. Yeah. Yeah, they stay inside. Okay. Stay inside. And when they're outside, they're more likely to just go five years and get hit by a car yeah. or something, right? Yeah. And I mean, and all those, the, you know, those nasty parasites, there's tapeworms, there's hookworms, there's roundworms. Yep. And then, so on top of that, the problem is that when you have so many cats and, and they're letting, you're letting them outdoors, you know, if you're not fixing them, we got a big problem on our hands. So, you know, Marla, like. Okay. If left unfixed, how many cats will you have in four years? How many cats do you think you're going to have in four years, John? Uh, I know you're going to stick me with that one. Uh, what, eight, eight cats? Okay, so <laughs> conser conservatively, okay, you have two cats and the, um, and the female at four months gets pregnant 
okay? And let's say that for each litter, they have conservatively um, 2.8 cats, okay? We are looking at 3,822 cats within four years. And that's conservatively. That's and if not, that's if they if that's if they all survive, and they um, and they're not spayed or neutered. You take two cats, okay, in over four years, conservatively, you're like you're looking at three thousand eight hundred and twenty-two. And most cats will will have more than two or three cats in a litter. They're going to have the, for the first litter, maybe they'll have two or three, but they could have six and six or seven. So that number could be could skyrocket as all of them start reproducing and also having larger litters. Geez, after you said that, that reminds me of that that daytime uh, game show host. They used to say, "Make sure you spade no neuter your rug." Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Yeah, he was right. He's absolutely right. For dogs, I'll say yeah. that. he's great. No, no, no. That was um. It was uh. Bob, 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 Bob Barker. Barker. Oh, that's right, Bob Barker. I'm sorry. Yeah, the price is right. It was the price is right. Whoops. Yeah, yeah. He was a huge national spay and neuter advocate. It was a massive thing for him. He said right? it every 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 show. show. Yeah. Every show. So the the last question actually goes to that question as well. So you know, how do we stop that that overpopulation? Um, and so this is something that people always say. You know, what is this what thing called does, TNR? What does TN and our mean and how do i know if i see if a cat if i see a cat outside if it's fixed well i'm going to answer it quickly and then julie is going to go into this in more detail because julie is actually tnr certified um tnr stands for trap neuter and release and um there's a lot of wonderful folk out there um rescuers who um spend their days um, going out into communities and and trapping animals and then bringing them to clinics and having them vetted and spayed and neutered and then they go if they're friendly they can be they can be adopted out if they're not friendly if they're more feral then they will um, go back into the community that they came from most likely this is already community cats so there's already a colony that someone is taking care of there are so many out there the um if you you can you if you look at a cat quickly a community cat one that's in a colony that you see outside if you see an ear tip um it, it's literally one of the ears it's it's cut off um that generally means that the cat has been um seen by a vet and was um was was um spayed or neutered and then released doesn't always mean that because sometimes, you know, there's an accident or um, a reason that the cat lost the top of the ear. You might have been in a fight, you know, that's a Yeah, but generally speaking, um, the, the veterinarian who is doing the TNRs is going to, um, he's going to ear tip, he's gonna clip the top of the ear. And um, Julie can tell us more about TNR. Okay. So, so when you have a, a TNR situation, it means that there could be a colony um, in your area. Um, that means that there is a, a, a man or a woman who every day uh, in the morning and or in the evening feeds a group of cats the same time of day. And that group always is uh, in need of that person. Um, if that person were to leave and not feed them, they would often die because they are dedicated to that person uh, feeding them. Uh, during the day, they go and they, they wander the streets and, and, you know, they fare however they have to fare. There is no way to, um, you know, stop them from getting hit by cars, but at least they're not reproducing and causing this um, incredible damage to that area. Um, it's, it's limiting the, their ability to reproduce and create that 4,000 cats that we don't want. Um, so uh, some individual will, will see that if the ear is tipped, that means that she got that cat and she was able to re-release it into that zone and, and has a dedicated feeder. Uh, sometimes they'll bring them to a certain zone and reintroduce them, but there's actually a process. So please just don't dump your cat into a, a colony. Uh, cats that are dumped into colonies often don't survive uh, or get very sick or attacked by the other ones. There is a pecking order within these colonies. Uh, so it is very important um, to have a professional 
uh, who, if you have a cat that, or a bunch of cats that are reproducing, a professional come in and help evaluate the situation. Um, there are many TNR people um, out there. Many animal shelters can refer you to TNR people, and those TNR people are specialized in keeping a cat population down, protecting them, and uh, re-releasing them uh, back into a safe scenario. Okay. Sorry, my sunshine is like coming in. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's all right. We, we know that from before. You know? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, once again, you're looking for, from the public, you're looking for volunteers to help you with uh, you know, your, uh, your job here with uh, getting people, getting cats out there and getting them into homes and not in the backyards. Absolutely. And you're looking for funding uh, to continue your work because it's it's expensive to, to uh, yes, do this a particular job. And uh, you're going to uh, give us the um, uh, information on... Uh, how to reach you once again you can verbalize it is rnrpets.org and our email address is rock and rescue one r-o-c-k the letter n r-e-s-c-u-e one at gmail.com so whether or not you're, you want to volunteer or you want to help out with donations however you know give me an email or or a phone call whatever we're just in the middle of kitten season right now so we can really use fosters as well and we would prefer email or going onto our website versus phone calls the phone we use our our, our phones are really for those who have adopted from us or those who have been approved to adopt you know um, it's easier to reach us if you with you the email us or yeah. go on our website the website okay very good uh let's see we got 30 seconds uh, is there any events coming up or something where uh, uh they're telling me like 30 seconds which is me yeah well quickly is there any event that you may want them to, people out there to come to well right now mm -hmm. the biggest thing is that we have um many 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 kittens up for adoption um, and so if they go on to our website, they will be able to um, help either foster those kittens or um, help feed those kittens. Wet kitten food is in great need right now. Um, and best of all, adopt them. We have so many little cuties yeah. and they're just little little tots. All right. Wet I, food and litter. I got, the, and litter. I got the high sign. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. And thanks uh, to the viewers for tuning in. Uh, the community forum. We'll see you next week, same time, same station. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs>